Okay, All this right. is Stacy. We're on the Kenai River here, and he's going to teach us how to fillet a sockeye salmon on the river. And this is a valued fish here. We'll take a little turn here. Yes, it is. Okay. What you want to do is cut this back fin off, just like so. So when you come through with the knife, it's not in your way. Okay. And then you want to cut this this belly fin off as well to keep it from getting in your way. And because what happens when you don't? Well, it, it, it causes you to mess up coming down the, uh, the spine and you end up missing some meat. Okay. Then you flop them over. And I like to do them from the tail along the front. What you want to do is just apply pressure right along the spine. You got to have a real sharp knife though. And then you just keep it right along the spine all the way through. Sometimes you got to hold his head from sliding around and then you'll hit the ribs about midway. And your knife, being as sharp as it is, will go right through him. You come right behind the gill, behind the fin, and you slice him off there. Then you have one slab. What you want to do then is cut the guts out, throw them babies in the stream. Like so. All right. Then you flop them over. Do the same thing, only different. But what you want to do is you want to hold up on the meat. So the meat's out of the way and you can just come down the spine. Like so. All the way up to his head. And you do the same thing right around the gill plate there. And then what you have is two slabs. And then you got a tail and a head, which go down the river. Okay. <laughs> I caught it splash for you. Nice. <laughs> All right. So then we do what's called ribbing, which is a knife like this. It's a little flexible, skinnier. Seems to work well for the ribbing. Well, you just take and you make an incision right along the edge of the bone, like so. That gives you like a mark to start with that's straight with the bone line. And then this front two bones, there's a couple extras in there. And you gotta go down all the way to get those short bones? Yep. Okay. And then you start in, and once you get cut, you tilt the knife up like so to kind of stay really close to the bone and keep as much as the meat as possible. See? Just like that. Nope. Alright, and then what I always do is I get my other knife and I cut this belly fat off of here. Some people keep it, some people don't. But either way, I cut it off, and then either we keep it or we don't. In this case, I think we'll throw it. So then you have what's called one. Nice slab of cleaned, uh, it was about a 12 pound, Cockeye, maybe? Did yeah, you say about it? About that, yeah. And then the same thing on this side. Just do a little slice right down the where the ribs are. And then you press up, up, press up. And keep, are you getting them short ribs? Oh yeah, they're gone. So now all the and then belly. So then all you should have left in here is these middle ribs. And they go right down to about here where the tail starts and then your rib, your bone free. Okay, so you can pull the pin bones lighter then. You can pull these pin bones out right before you go to cook it. Yeah. And then it will be a absolute bone free uh, filet. But uh, we like to portion ours into nice thick 
and point out about where that bone starts again? Yeah, you could. Yeah, what you want to do is cut it right about where the where the pin bones end, which is right where I cut it. Okay, and then there's not a single bone in that one, then, it's right? It's a boneless piece right there. Okay. And then you just portion it like kind of the size you want when you go to eat your dinners. That way, it's, you don't thaw out a bunch of different sizes you don't want. And then, uh, but I mean, if you look. You have a nice thick steak. Yeah, put that aside. Oh yeah. Okay. For a nice meal. Okay. That you can eat. Yeah. With your family or whoever. Okay. And uh, hope uh, helped you out. Very good.